What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. Mine's been decent, I guess. You know, it's my Saturday for working, so I did work yesterday, which gave me a six-day week yesterday. But again, I said I'm not going to complain about my job. God has blessed me with a job that provides for my family, so I am going to be happy about it. So let's go ahead and get into today's video. I want to talk today about my Debian setup. Um, I have spent the past week since my last video getting things kind of customized and configured the way I like them. I'm still not completely done, but it is looking pretty sharp. Um, if I do say so myself. Um, another note is awesome window manager. I was extremely uh, unexcited, I guess, to actually work with awesome window manager just because I'm not a fan of the Lua language and the configuration file for awesome is a nightmare. But um, I have come to find that it's really not as horrible as I was expecting. Um, I have played around with it before and it was such a headache. Um, actually taking the time to sit down and read through some stuff and figure some things out. I am still extremely lost at the moment, um, but I have figured out how to make a few changes here and there. Um, I'm still working on modularizing my configuration file, but I at least have it set up to where I think it's pretty slick looking. The functionality is great. Um, and you know, I'm liking this window manager more and more each day. Uh, would I add it to my list of top five favorites? No, um, not by a long shot, not right now, but who knows, by the end of this challenge we might see a different side to this window manager and I might actually just fall in love with it, who knows. Um, but now let's talk about Debian a little bit. Um, I have started this challenge, it was going to be a month long challenge, I was challenged to extend it out. Um, I don't really know what that extension is going to prove. Um, that I couldn't figure out within a month, but we're gonna do it anyway. I have decided that I'm gonna live in Debian for the foreseeable future. To all you Void users out there and you Void fans who followed me because of my Void videos, I am not done with Void, so please don't think that I have uh, switched over to Debian and that, that's, that's that. Um, I'll run Debian for a while, you know, and I am I'm always excited to go back to Void. Void is home. Void is has been my favorite distribution that I've run in my entire time on Linux. But that being said, Debian has been a pleasant experience. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot that has been too crazy about it. Um, the install process is very simple. I explained that on my last video. And I have literally had zero. That's a big fat goose egg. I have had zero problems with uh, this distribution aside from the one problem I talked about in my last video with the Wi-Fi and the airplane mode so that's the only issue I've had with it other than that this has gone smooth as silk this has been a seamless transition um, everything I need so far has just worked out of the box and Debian is very impressive in my book um, there is a good reason there's a lot of distributions built on this solid foundation because Debian is so far fantastic um, I do enjoy it thoroughly. Um, I don't need all the bleeding edge stuff. You know, I do like to have, I did like Arch, or Arch, or excuse me, geez, I can't talk, Arch and Void because they are rolling release and they do have some of the stuff that is um, like for my printer and stuff like that. So I've had to do a little bit of working with um, uh, Debian and uh, to see if I can get my printer going right. But aside from that, it has been pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and jump onto my laptop here and take a look at what I've been doing and we're going to discuss a few things and I'm just going to go over a few things but uh, that's just kind of a, uh, the way this video is. So let's go ahead and jump to this here and this is my desktop. This is uh, what my customization of Awesome Window Manager has become so far and my Debian uh, distribution. So if we launch my Scratchpad terminal here you can see I have uh, my scratch pad. I've got a nice color scheme going on here. I like this kind of turquoisey color with the gray and you can't really tell right here but that's kind of a brown color. Um, if we actually close that and launch a terminal here, let's clear the screen and zoom in and let's CD into awesome. That's the directory. If I do an LS you can see I've got my auto run. I've got lane here which is one of the libraries. I have new Lua. This is where I'm trying to write my um, new configuration file in a more modularized fashion. Um, right now I'm still running the stock RC Lua with a few changes to it. Uh, these are the themes here so um, in my new file I'm gonna put my themes directory here. I'm still running out of the default themes um, in the user slash share slash awesome slash themes directory that comes when you install awesome. I have made a couple changes to those I know shame on me but um, I did change those to kind of do what I wanted and then I have some volume control stuff here. Um, but let's go ahead and vim into RC Lua and hit enter and you can see the color scheme. I, I really like this color scheme, kind of a brown gold color with this 
uh, uh, teal uh, with the white and the gray. Um, I'm going to change the color, I think, of my comments because I want my comments to really be set apart from the rest of the code. But um, this is kind of what I'm working with color scheme wise. Um, you can see this is my configuration file, obviously, for awesome. I have made a few changes to it, just basically key bindings and layouts up here. Um, if we actually look for like we'll just search for clock um, this builds the clock right here and I actually you can see I added the icon here the clock doesn't usually have the icon in it I added the functionality to uh, get the calendar pop up when you hover uh, which was nice which really wasn't that hard you just add this month underscore calendar equals awful dot widget dot calendar pop up dot month you can have this do a year long calendar as well um, but then you do a month underscore calendar attach and you attach it to the my clock uh, widget so when you hover on my clock the calendar pop-up shows up so I did that and I actually made that go um, this is my obviously the clock it refreshes every 15 minutes this is the um, layout of the clock but then if we go down here you can see we've got my text clock which is over here I switched the widgets around I moved my sys tray over here um, so right here where it says uh, left widgets um, if you come down here and go to the Wii box setup my Wii box setup you have left widgets and I have my layout box right here which I changed the color of the layout box icons to actually match my color scheme um, I have the uh, tag list right here which um, I haven't changed the icons yet I'm not sure if I'm gonna that's usually a normal for me um, but I kind of like the, num the numbers right now but we'll just see what what this turns out to be um, and then I have um, my prompt box um, and then the middle I have uh, widgets uh, so my sys tray right here my widget sys tray is right here um, the one thing about the awesome window manager bar up here the Wii bar is any of your widgets here like if you have left widgets and you don't have anything in this middle widget um, section um, maybe this isn't the norm um, and I just haven't figured it out yet but if you have nothing here and you start your right widgets it starts them all the way over here right next to the left um, so you need kind of a placeholder here for the center if you want your white right side widgets to be all the way over here um, Again that might change the more I get into this I might find something that tells me no Jake you're wrong And I will correct myself if that's the case or if you know any differently go ahead and let me know um, But you just basically line them up here You have your left widgets your middle middle widgets and your right widgets So I have my sys tray for the middle and it takes up all this space here um, I have my uh, right widgets as um, my uh, clock over here and then I have a text box right here with this empty space in here to give me kind of a gap here between the two and then I have a script so I have the awful dot widget dot wash watch excuse me and then inside these parentheses um, the command I want bash to run and that's my battery so that's going to check my battery here and then I have another text box with empty space here to go between these two and then I have another widget dot watch to actually run my volume script to show me my volume output now I haven't set up my hotkeys to run the volume yet but I, the script I run is going to give me a pop-up through notify send that shows me the volume level um, so this is just going to be here to actually kind of give me an idea when I just glance up there if I'm not changing my volume what the volume is set at so that's basically what I've done configuration wise. Um, I took out the uh, title bars on the windows, which I just, I don't like title bars on windows. And I took out the, um, basically you could, uh, you had bars up here that when you had windows open, they were all listed up here, kind of like on windows, you had tabs um, and you could click on them to go to each one. I'm not a fan of that stuff. Um, so I got rid of that as well. Uh, but those are kind of the main things I've changed on this configuration file. Um, like I said, I did make a few changes for color scheme wise and stuff in the configuration in the themes file in uh, user share themes. But um, other than that, the rest of this file is pretty much the same. Um, I changed the key binding for the uh, run menu, which awesome comes complete with its own run menu. So instead of using my launch script, if I just hit mod shift D, I get the run menu up here, which is really cool. I figure why not implement what they have installed because it works great. Um, so I'm still using that. Um, I did, like I said, I got my scratch pad hooked up, one of them. I'm going to have many more, believe me. Um, and then right up here, I, like I said, I changed the color scheme of those widgets. I did change my wallpaper to this kind of futuristic, desolate-looking wallpaper, which uh, 
I know it's kind of uh, depressing, but it kind of matched my color scheme and I thought it was kind of neat looking. So that's kind of what I've done so far. Um, not a whole lot going on. Um, I'm just living life in Debian right now and it has been, like I said, smooth as silk. I haven't had any issues. Uh, the one thing I did do is I changed, I was running WPA supplicant for my Wi-Fi and I had a script up here showing my Wi-Fi status and yada, yada, yada. I did change that to actually install Network Manager and um, use Network Manager. Two things with Network Manager. Um, on Arch, when you install Network Manager, um, if you want the icon, you need to install uh, Network Manager applet or NM applet or whatever. Uh, that is not available on uh, Debian as its own package. What you need to do is install Network Manager GNOME and then you will get the actual icon with it for your SysTray as well. If you just install Network Manager, you don't get that icon. You can install um, NM tray, network manager tray, I believe, but it was a really ugly, big, nasty looking icon and it didn't quite have the same aesthetic as this does. So I did install network manager GNOME to actually give me this icon here. The other thing is when you install network manager, let's go ahead and open a terminal here. Let's clear the screen and zoom in. Um, when you install network manager, um, we've got a CD into um, ETC and I think it's network manager. Uh, yeah, and do an LS, don't need to be capitalized, um, and then in your networkmanager.conf, so let's uh, vim into networkmanager.conf. When you first install Network Manager on Debian, you will not see any of your Wi-Fi connections, even when you start the system with your sudo systemctl enabled network manager you won't see them because when you come in here into the config file they are not automatically managed um, out of the box like they are on Arch or Void or any of the other distributions I've used. Uh, it took me a few minutes to figure out the fact that I had to come in here and come into this networkmanager.conf file and change this managed to true. Uh, once I changed managed to true then I could see all my Wi-Fi connections that were possible and I could connect to the internet. But until then, you have this set up and it doesn't allow you to connect. So that's kind of what I've got going on right now. I know that's not a whole lot of setup, but I've been doing a lot with school right now. Um, I'm working through a class in Python. I took my final for my database class finally and passed that. Um, so I have been really busy this week. So hopefully I'll get another video out um, within the next few days or so, touching on a few things. I just kind of want to keep you guys up to date uh, as to what's going on with Debian and what I think so far. Again, pluses about Debian, super seamless install. Um, super seamless when it comes to actually uh, getting things installed and running. Um, great distribution, really solid. Uh, downsides, there's a few packages that I've run into that I haven't been able to find yet, but nothing that's a deal breaker. Um, and really that's about it. I haven't found a downside to Debian yet. Um, I will say that there is a good possibility that I'm going to be running into an issue with packages in the near future with something I'm trying to install, but we'll, we'll just have to see. Um, other than that, it's been great. Um, my thoughts on Awesome Window Manager so far, it's pretty impressive. Um, it's not, like I said, my favorite window manager, um, but it is not uh, my hated window manager like it was before I started. Uh, before I started this, I was really dreading actually getting into this window manager. And I know it's extremely popular and a lot of people talk about how great it is and so I shouldn't have been worried about it. but. The times that I've attempted to use it and configure it, um, the best I could do was copy somebody else's config and put it in there. Um, and if you know me at all or if you've watched my videos, I've said numerous times that I don't like to copy other people's configs and run them. Um, I used to uh, when I first started this and I do believe I gave a video out where I did give that advice to take somebody else's config and copy it um, and then change it from there so you can see how things work. And while yes, that works if you don't care about understanding um, how things work, um, it's just... It goes along with that saying, if you teach a man to, or give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him to fish, you feed him for the rest of his life. If you sit down, read the documentation, figure it out on your own, as opposed to copying somebody else's config and going from there, you just learn so much better. So I try not to do that, and that's kind of what I had to do with Awesome the first few times. I'm trying to do it differently this time, read the documentation, get everything installed, get everything written up myself, and that way I can 
learn how this this window manager works so that's kind of where i'm at on this journey so far this has been a great challenge so far it has been pretty well painless so um that's been nice so um that's what i've got for you today um i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you guys have a great rest of your day if you haven't yet please remember to like and subscribe i'll tell you what the likes on the channel do so much more than you are aware of um they really help me out i think more so than views so if you could uh do me a favor and hit that like button um, and if you're not subscribed um, and you so feel led, please subscribe as well. And yeah, we'll see you on the next one. All right. You guys have a great rest of your week. Stay safe and God bless. Love you.